Welcome to Straight from the Gavel. I'm your host, Dave Barber. Each and every week at this time, we invite a member of the General Assembly in to discuss some of the things they've been working on and how it impacts you, the Rhode Island citizen. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome a gentleman that we've interviewed in uh, short form, Capital Spotlights, five minutes, uh, representing Warwick, the Honorable State Representative, David Bennett. Representative, it's good to see you. Good to see you too, David. Always nice talking to you. Well, let, let me tell you what. Uh, you're finishing your third year as a uh, state rep, so you're getting a little time under your uh, belt. Uh, you have to feel good about that. We wish the economy was better, but how do you, how do you feel like, in general, things are going right now? I, I think we're, we're doing better. I, I really do that. I really believe that... Um, I see more businesses coming in. Uh, not the kind of business that's going to employ uh, un unemployed, but um, Warwick's, Warwick's doing well with the airport. We've got uh, some, so a new deli, a new restaurant in, in Appenog. Uh, we've uh, just sold the Leviton building, and uh, that that should be coming up with some promising uh, jobs. I'm I'm hoping. It's a, that's what it's about. Jobs right now. We got to get people working. Well, I tell I'll tell you. Um in September, I kind of moved into your neck of the woods. I live in Coesit and uh, was very excited about making the move after living seven years in Pawtucket. I moved into the Warwick area. And uh, even though the mayor of Warwick and I come from different political faiths, uh, he's done a pretty good job. I think the, the city of Warwick is pretty sound. Yes. It is. Uh, we're, we're one of the uh, only cities that are in the black. Um, Mayor, Mayor Scott Avedision has done a great job. The Warwick City Council has done a great job. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, movement. Warwick's a great place to live. You know, um, I've, I was born there, um, raised, and, and I'll probably spend the rest of my life there. You know, I'm, I'm, I love Warwick. Uh, I can see the the changes, like when the airport first started to expand, I myself, like everyone else, was anxious, you know, because we're picturing it as being LaGuardia or sure. O'Hare. And um, they're doing a fine job. They're doing a good job. And, and, and again, it goes back to the economy. You know, we get things moving, get people working. And I, I feel, you know, it's doing well. Well, you mentioned uh, the airport. Um, I think it's imperative that the citizens of Rhode Island get an opportunity to go to Warwick uh, Green Airport and be able to fly nonstop all the way to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. That's critical. I'll, I'll never forget uh, attending a Chamber of Commerce meeting a few years ago when Speaker Murphy was uh, then the Speaker of the House and he looked at uh, President Piva Weed and said, let's get this done. Let's make this happen so that citizens can fly to the West Coast nonstop. That's good for business. That's very good for business. Um, I remember in the older days, we used to have to take a puddle jump out to LaGuardia, then hop on a jet there and fly out to L.A. And um, it's good for business that you'd be able to come here. And, and I would avoid Logan myself. If I wasn't a Rhode Islander, no, I'll say that because I'm a Rhode Islander. But I would rather stay in a smaller state like Rhode Island, you know, myself, um, instead of the traffic of Boston. I'm not a city guy, so. Well, I got to tell you something else. You know, JetBlue just started service out of Worcester, Mass., which isn't uh, much of a drive from uh, Rhode Island. And uh, the ease and access of that uh, JetBlue is certainly good. I, I'm wishing well for them. I, I hope that it works out. Uh, but, you know, being able to travel locally, I, I think Logan is a nightmare. Just parking, mm -hmm. the, the whole experience. Uh, you know, uh, you know I, I take nothing away from the fine folks of Boston. No. It's just a tough airport. Yeah. Well, it's, it's large, you know, and we're... we're People from Rhode Island, uh, speaking for myself, I gotta speak for myself. I don't like cluster and the, and the, the confusion and oh, I should have took that right. Then you gotta go five blocks down and circle back. You know, I'm not that way. Uh, you know, 
Providence is about as big as I want to get. Right. You know, and and um, that's that's my own personal. I know I've got friends that love the cities. I mean, they'll they'll stay in New York City and just walk around. You know, and and they love it. Um, I just wasn't gifted with that. Well, now let me ask you this: um, as you look back at your uh, last year and your service with the General Assembly, uh, again, you were a real champion on the issue of minimum wage. And uh, you had a pretty uh, successful year in that you were able to see a bump in the minimum wage here in Rhode Island. That has to make you feel pretty proud, I would think. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, when, 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 you, when you raise the minimum wage, the lowest earners, they spend their money right here in Rhode Island. It's not like they're going to go and take their $8 an hour and go take off to New York City, let's say, you know. And um, it's money well spent, and it, it's hard enough to get by on the amount of money that we all make, you know. I mean, unless you're a millionaire. Um, I remember back when I was a young man, I was making about $3 an hour at minimum wage. And, you know, thank God I live with my mom and dad. And... Um, to help not only the, the young people to get the, their lives rolling, but there's a lot of elderly people that are retired and they're picking up minimum wage jobs. And what are you going to do with, it, with that kind of money? You can't even order a, a meal. You know, it's going to cost you a day's pay. So um, I feel that, that while raising the minimum wage puts more money in the people's pocket, it, it also encourages them to spend a little more. And right now, that's what our economy needs is people out there spending Well, I like that expression, living wage, because mm -hmm. frankly speaking, Rep, none of us can live on the minimum wage. No. Uh, the dollars and cents just aren't there to have any modicum of uh, decency in terms of your uh, uh, course of your life. I mean, it's, it's just really, really tough. And... When you talk to business owners, they'll tell you, you can't hire good people for minimum wage. No. You, you need more than minimum wage in order to get good quality people. Absolutely. You know, if I'm going to work for you and I'm going to be loyal to you, I'm going to do the best job I can do for you, well, then you should be helping me live my life, you know, you know paying me enough money to where when I go home after working for you all day and I can sit down and sit, you know, Go maybe bring my girlfriend out to watch a movie, get something to eat. That's pretty expensive now. I mean, you're talking, when you're talking minimum wage, you're talking about somebody taking an hour's worth of work to buy a pizza. Right. You know, <laughs> and, and think about that. You know, and now you, you, you got your date or your wife. Now you got to buy something to drink. What's that, a half an hour's worth of pay? Exactly. You know, and if you look at it in that kind of light, um, the gas. God, you just work two, two, three hours, you know, to put that amount of gas in your Will this car. be something that as you look at 2014, you'll try to expand on that you'll be uh, looking at again? Yes, yeah, especially if the, the, the federal government wants to raise minimum wage. They, they see the need for it. They're, they're um, I think they're talking about 10, 10 an hour. Um, I, I would, I, I'm happy with the bumps. You know, if I could go right to a number, I'd go right to $12, $12 an hour. You know, because I feel that's a living wage, a very low living wage. Um, but, I mean, I'm happy with 50 cents here, 25 cents here, as long as we're going that way, you know. You know, uh, I've had the uh, good fortune of interviewing a gentleman across the building from us, uh, Senator Lou Raptakis, and he says, Dave, you can't hire good people on minimum wage. He has a pizza restaurant. He said, I have to pay more than minimum wage to get good quality people. He understands the dynamic of why it's important. And we're talking about quality of life here. Uh, the Supreme Architect said, we will be judged by the way we treat the least among us. And I think, you know, when you deal with an issue like minimum wage, this is pretty important. I feel it is. And Evan Lynch helped me run it on the Senate side. 
So I can't leave Aaron out. Aaron did a lot of work on this bill also. Um, it was nice of her to help me out. And um, now you got me thinking about bumping it <laughs> to 14. But I, I'd have to uh, uh, talk with Aaron and, and see see what's going on. And But I'm sure we're going to always try to bring it up. She lives in Warwick, too. Yes, she's my senator. Yeah. Uh, she lives near where I just moved to. I see her from time to time, and her heart's in the right place. And uh, again, we're talking about just fundamental decency, right. giving people dignity, giving people an opportunity to make a living that uh, can provide for their families. And when you look even at some of these fast food companies, uh, Subway, Tremendously successful, a great, great franchise. Um, they ought to be able to pay more uh, than just minimum wage in order to give their uh, people a quality of life that they deserve. Right. You should see what the CEOs make. The CEO, the CEOs make huge money. McDonald's, the Kentucky Fried Chicken, they're they're owned by different uh, corporations. And um, the CEOs get unbelievable amount of money. And for, when you ask them to, to raise the minimum wage, 35 cents, it's like, you know. It's like pulling teeth. <laughs> Absolutely. You take the words right out of my Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, they, they will fight you tooth and nail right. on uh, these very issues. Looking back at 2013, another bill that you introduced that was enacted into law will expand the subsidy aid program for relatives who care for the developmentally disabled. Tell our viewers about that. Well, that bill there came across to me from the Trudeau Center. I was talking with Don Adams. He's the president of the Trudeau Center. And um, we were discussing how if I have a brother or sister who's got a disability and you have a brother and sister that have a disability, I can take care of your brother or sister and get a subsidy. But I can if I take care of my own. You can take care of my brother and sister and get a subsidy, but you can't take care of your own. And that to me, that kind of knocked me right out of my chair. I'm like, but all this focus on keeping families together. I mean, who would know what cereal my brother likes in the right. morning? What color clothes he likes? Exactly. Uh, you, know, you know, what he likes to do on his spare time when he's getting agitated. You know, and you love this person. Now, you don't want to see them leave, but sometimes you can't afford to bring them home. You know, you're better off letting them go to a, a subsidized living area, uh, shared living. And um, I wanted to see that change. You know, if I got an aunt that wants to, you know, something happens to me and I have a disabled child, I'd want my brother or my sister to, to take care of them. But if they're already in their own families, now you're going to add this person, my, my child to that, they, don't, they won't get any state money. They won't get any assistance. Um, and they're kind of left out in the cold. But that's changed now yes. as a result yeah, of your legislation. Role. Yes. Um, when will it go into effect and how will it go into effect? Well, I believe it goes into effect in January. Um, I, I'm not positive on that. I get so much in my mind, I don't remember the words. Sure. It goes into effect. But what it'll do, it'll, it'll, it will get some of the people out of some of the group homes. They'll be able to go live at their own home. They'll still need services in the daytime, you know, but I mean, they'll be able to sleep in, in their own, their family's home. Um, it will allow for the families to um, get some of, the, some of the people out of the institutions, maybe. You know, but not a lot of them. Um, it's, gonna, it's, it's a very delicate line between severity. You know, you have to have a, uh, a sibling that's, that's able to not be watched all the time. You know, like, you know, I'm in bed, my, and I know my brother's in bed. I know sure. he's going to be fine. But if he gets up in the middle of the night and starts taking off, well, then I'm going to have to worry about that. Uh, there's other people that are so severe, severely disabled that they need constant care, you know. And um, these people, will, you know, unfortunately will not be able to live at home unless you bring in outside help to help you. And how could you do that if you weren't 
getting any money from anybody. Well, and again, know? this is something you know a little something about because you work in the healthcare yes. field. Um, you've even uh, taken steps to get certain types of certification for PAs, uh, physician's assistants. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, with the physician's assistants, they come out with, they're already physician's assistants, and they've, they, they went and got accredited. They've come out with a new system of accreditation, which they wanted the, the physical um, assistants to go through and take again. Now, to that PA, they probably, they're working, and now they have to go take a job, uh, you know, and go get recertified. It would be like if all of a sudden you come up with a new certification for nurses. Every nurse in the state now had to go retake a nursing test. I just thought it was an unneeded cost. Um, it needed um, clarification that one accreditation, is, <coughs> it's pretty much the same as another accreditation. You know, as long as they fall under the guideline of, you know, their performed duties, what they're expected of, their limitations. You know, and um, it's... It, it just makes the two accreditations, you can now have either one, but I think one now is going to be eliminated. But I shouldn't have to go back and take a new one because you come up with a new one, and I already did the old one. Well, and i got to tell you, you talk about a great uh, career, the future. Uh, PAs are really, really instrumental in our health care uh, today, and it's a great career. It's a great profession that I would urge people watching us right now that are thinking about, well, I'd like to work in the healthcare field. How can I do it? The PA is really a great job. Sure is. It helps us cut costs, uh, frees up the doctor's time. Uh, they go to school for it. I mean, it's not like they're, they're just um, help, helping cut costs. You have, that's a pretty strong course you have to take. It's, it's like um, there's practitioners. You know, they're, they're their courses are just as hard as the doctors, you know, if not more stringent than the doctors. Um, when, you, when you have professionals raising themselves up within their own field, it, it's going to help cut costs because not everybody's waiting to see the doctor. Right. I can say, David, you're going to see, I'm a doctor, you're going to see me this week, I'm going to take care of you, but next week you're going to come and see my PA. Or, or my nurse practitioner is going to see you. Um, and these people earn these degrees. I mean, they're very hard to get. I'd have one if, you know, if I was a younger man and, uh, you know, wanted to pursue that. Registered nurses, you know, we start off with a two-year degree. There's four-year degrees. And you can advance right up to being a doctor. Well, I remember um, a friend of mine who was a, uh, a cardiac thoracic surgeon Mm -hmm. And she told me how vital their PA was to their practice and the kind of money they paid this individual because they were so critically important. And they write prescriptions too, correct? Yes, yes. Their, their job, I didn't mean to make it sound like their job isn't, they don't make a lot of money. In, in any profession, you're paid by what you can do for the the office for the person you're working for. Um, you also have to have uh, the accreditation. You have to have the, the, the service, the insurance. There's all kinds of stuff that comes along with these jobs. Um, but the PAs are essential to a, to a cardiologist. He can't be in all these places at once. So Correct. he gets a person that he knows is... is accredited, and he knows that, that they're very good at what they do, and they get to know him. See, when I, was a, when I was younger, I worked for surgeons, and they taught me everything they know, and I do their style, you know, and that's what they liked. They'd go in and look at my work, and they'd say, good, David, you know, that's, that's the way we want it done. How are we doing here in Rhode Island with our own uh, health source program? I mean, obviously, you're a psychiatric nurse, um, you're very, very intimately involved in the healthcare field. How are we doing right now in Rhode Island? I, we're, doing, we're doing very well. We're way ahead of a lot of states. Um, a, lot, a lot of the states are where we were a few years back. Uh, Rhode Island Health, Health Source, I believe it's called, 
um, really is is keeping the healthcare movement going, move going in the right direction. Um, for the smallest state in the country, we probably got the largest part of healthcare done. You have to feel good about serving on H E W, huh? Yes. As yeah. a result Chairman of your uh, uh, as a result of your background, I, mm -hmm. I, I would think it would be a, a, a good fit for you. It's an excellent fit for me and, and I, I get to I get to look at things that that's when when I came into this uh, to be a representative, I, I was saying that some of the things that we do, you know, could either be done better or it doesn't need to be done. You know, I mean, they're, they're old-time lawyers, and, you know, being an HD, HEW, you get to hear right from the constituents, you know, and all the companies. And we sit back, we talk about it, you know, we vote on it, and if it makes it to the floor, then we advocate for it. You know, but you still, that's the beauty of our, our democracy, where I can advocate against it. You know, it, it's... Um, it's a unique opportunity for a nurse. I think that there should be more healthcare professionals up here looking at these sure. these bills that come through. You know, I uh, I was talking to you before the uh, taping today that uh, I called my state representative Joe Trillo, yes. and I said, Representative Trillo, I have good news and I have bad news. And he said, What's the good news? I said, Well, you have a new constituent in your community. He said, What's the bad news? I said, It's me. He said, There goes the neighborhood. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm so I, I, I'm so uh, you know new to Warwick and in getting involved in you know what's happening in Warwick and in seeing some of the things that that are happening there. I know you've been extremely focused on some projects involving seniors. Tell us about that. Well, seniors are our uh, most precious resource, I believe. You know, they've been here. Uh, they've been through most of what we're all going to go through eventually. Um, one, of, one of my bills this year um, lowered the, the amount of people that have to live in a, a unit before they get uh, a generator, you know, backup generator. It was at 150. Now I got to lower it to 100. Picture yourself being you're alone, you're, you're elderly, all of a sudden the lights go out. Right. You know, and you aren't going to back, you don't have a backup generator. If you're, if you got to leave or you open your door and it's completely black, I mean, that could be total chaos, sure. you know? And the backup generator, all it does is turn on the hall lights, you know, it lets the elevator run and powers a day room. And that's where you should have all your, your seniors anyways is in that day room, you know, unless they want to sleep. And then you just go up and check on them. But, um... Especially in New England, you look at how many times we lose power. You know, a, a good ice storm comes through and knocks everything out. And, um, you know, my mom's 93. You oh, know, she, she, lives, she lives in, a, in a, um, a complex with other elderly people. And she, she's healthy, knock on wood. She's a healthy woman. But I go over and, and, and you see how important their knowledge is to, to pass on. You know, they can tell you things, you know, that... that and, and, and what's great, too, about. these seniors vote. They're activated. Oh, yeah. They're motivated. Yes, they they're, are. They're engaged. Yes. They follow what's going on mm -hmm. in their local community, and uh, they pay attention. They so be. I think it's, it's important that people like you pay attention to them. Oh, I, I've, I've, two, I've got two seniors on my, um, my city committee, and... Uh, they're a joy. They are. They're a joy. And they can tell you how Appadog used to be, how Warwick Neck used to be, <laughs> how Connecticut used to be, you know, and the changes they've seen. You know, Hillsgrove Airport, they still call it Hillsgrove Airport sometimes. I'm like, oh. Yeah. They're, they're, it's something that people take for granted that we're all going to be there. We're going to be there. So learn while, while you can, you know, and, and if you get a a mentor that's willing to, to teach you the ups and downs of ways things change, who better than talk to than a senior? You know? Exactly. Now, as you uh, get ready to head into the new uh, session, which will begin soon in January of 2014, 
what are the things that are on your radar screen? What are your priorities? What are some of the things that you're looking at personally that you'd like to achieve with this coming session? Well, every politician will tell you it's jobs. Um, I'm the same way. I feel we get, we get people working. Um, another a thing that interests me uh, in Warwick and all over the state is taking the old buildings that are still structurally sound and redeveloping them. You know, the, instead of tearing them down and losing that piece of history, work on that building. They've done it in Coventry, West Warwick. Um, I'm trying to get it done. I'm down into Pontiac Mills. Um, use these old structures and create jobs with those. Um, construction jobs, good, um, good pay, you know, working, working family pay is what we need to do again. You know, people, people are, are focused on, on living a good quality life. And without money, and it, it just slows you down. And the Rhode Island's a unique place. We've got some of the finest old buildings you could ever great see. Right on the, great architecture. Yeah. yeah. Like, like uh, Pontiac Mills, it's right on the river. You know, it's beautiful there. There's deer there. You know, and you could turn that into, into something. We've had plans for it, but some of the plans have fell through. Um, right now, we got a company that, that wants to build condos, uh, shops. They want to build assisted living. And um, we just missed the, tax, the, the historic tax credit, um, but they're going to reapply for it. And um, that's a great bill right there because it helps it helps people utilize. Well, it. wait a minute. I, I I thought it was a great idea the minute when I first moved here because mm. it took these buildings and gave an incentive for people to invest and develop some of these great buildings and keep them vital and keep them vibrant in our community. And it, it's always kind of on again, off again, these uh, historic tax credits. I think it's a great idea. And so do I. And so do I. I. I think that it's something that we should very really stress in this state because, you know, a lot of our buildings, they sit there and they rot or they catch on fire and um, or they just decay, you know. And the... Because if you use hydropower, a lot of them are on beautiful rivers, you know. And you put a, you put a, a good um, environmentally safe company there, you know, on that river. That river will clean itself and become a beautiful, non-polluted area once again. Matter of fact, down in Warwick, I don't think um, the Patuxent River is, I think it's, you know, doing really well as far as cleaning itself. Um we just got to stop adding to it, you know, and then that falls in with the retaining wall to sewer. And Are you bullish on Warwick? Do you think the future looks good? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, Warwick's, Warwick's made up of um, some fine people. We've got people that care about our city. Uh, you, you can meet them all the time, and, and they've got great ideas. Um, I, I, feel, I feel Rhode Island as a whole. You know, we're going to get better. We're going to get better. We're going to move forward. Um, my parents went through the Depression, you know, and my mom used to say, well, you know, how things were then. And I'm saying, wow, we're seeing that now, you know, and in, in my lifetime. But you, you work through it and you figure out things. We need, we need to be honest with ourselves and get good representation, which the General Assembly right now has... has I can say this because I'm young and, and new, and I'm not young, but I'm young in this field. Um, we have some dedicated people here. I mean, people that no question. take each, each section of their state and concentrate on it. And then we blend it. And they're highly you know? motivated. They're very motivated. They're motivated because they love the, the state. You know, this, this job doesn't pay a, a lot of money. <laughs> well, you're exactly you know? right. And I have to tell you something, uh, Rep. Bennett. Uh, you're one of those people. I mean, you, you, you have the energy, the, the spirit, the enthusiasm of promoting your district. Uh, the half hour went by so quickly. Thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you. I, uh, I appreciate you giving your time to us today and uh, sharing some of your thoughts with us.
Anytime. And of course, we could not do it without you. My name is Dave Barber, and remember, you heard it straight from the guy.